a barrage of strikes against multiple Ukrainian cities, including in the capital, Kiev. The attacks are being seen as retaliation for Saturday's attack on a key bridge in Crimea. Well, for more on that situation in Ukraine, we can now speak to Alexander Rodnyansky, who's an advisor to President Zelensky and joins us live from Kiev tonight. Great to see you. Thanks for taking the time to join us. I wonder, Kiev has been very calm for the last few months, hasn't it? How did it feel when you heard those thuds this morning? Yes, that's right. Well, we felt that normality had almost returned to Kiev over the last few months. Uh, it wasn't quite the same as before, obviously, but restaurants were open, people were just going about their lives. Some of them had returned, not everyone. And today, it looked like exactly in the first few days of the war. It became a ghost town, where there were blasts throughout the city. I heard them myself. I heard the, and felt the vibrations in my flat. So it was really unpleasant, to say the least. And of course, now there is panic. I, I've seen huge queues outside, um, you know, people running for goods, obviously panicking, queues outside of gas stations, people trying to fuel up their cars. So it's, yeah, it's obviously, it is what it is. How will Ukraine respond to these attacks? Do you anticipate a change in the military strategy? Well, look, I don't think there's going to be much change. In fact, what is happening now is testimony to the fact that our military strategy has been successful. We recaptured around 6,000 square kilometers over the last few weeks and months. Uh, our counteroffensive was extremely successful and it's still going. And Russia is the desperate side. They don't really know how to react. They don't have any strategy other than to escalate. And we know that they have the potential to escalate with weapons that they haven't used so far and missiles that they haven't used so far potentially. But for us, the strategy is the same. We're going to be trying to liberate all of our country and free all of our people. With that in mind, the, the fear of escalation, are you anticipating more strikes and in cities across Ukraine that perhaps haven't been affected so far? That is a possibility, of course. We're trying to adapt to the circumstances, but we have no choice other than to liberate our territories, to free our people from occupation. Remember, they're being slaughtered, raped, uh, abused. There's horrible things happening to them under occupation, so there's really no option for us. And of course, we know that the Russian side is going to escalate, and that's why we need you know, very adequate support, and we need a very decisive response internationally to what is going on. And do you think that the West is doing enough to support Ukraine? What's your message there? The West is increasingly doing more. We're grateful for the support that we've received. But listen, we can see that today Russia has fired more than 100 rockets, missiles at Ukraine. Around half of them were actually shot down by air defense systems. But not every rocket was shut down. The other half landed and reached their destination. So that tells you immediately that we need stronger air defense systems. And we've been asking for this throughout. Since day one, we've been asking for you know, closing the sky, or somehow helping us secure the sky. And that hasn't happened. So that's a very clear example, obvious to everyone by now, hopefully, that we need more military support. We also need more pressure on Russia. We need more sanctions pressure. We need to make sure that thousands of Russia's corrupt and criminal elites are actually targeted. They're still going about their life. There's nothing happened. They're directly responsible for, for what's going on. They're not independent businessmen or victims, as they'd like to portray themselves. They're actually agents of the Kremlin, and there's plenty of proof for that. They need to be sanctioned and punished. And we need to obviously increase sanction pressure elsewhere, okay. sectoral sanctions, classifying Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. And finally, third, we need to think outside of the box in terms of how we destabilize the Russian regime once and for all. They need to be able, they need to focus on themselves. We need to, to, to retract their attention and focus it on Russia inside domestically rather than allowing okay. them to focus all of their energies on foreign policy. Okay, Alexander Rodnyansky, advisor to President Zelensky in Kiev. Thank you for joining us tonight.